Welcome to Reef Photography Part 2. Yes, I realize that it's about seven months since I did Part 1, so if you didn't catch it, here is an annotation that will take you there. In Part 1, I talk about photographic technique and some of the basics of capturing good exposure. Part 2 is going to be all about post-processing photos, mainly looking at white balance, black point, and saturation. The thing about color temperature is that our camera actually has a very difficult time working with our tank. So the, the camera tends to not see as much contrast as our eyes do. And so what you end up with is a mostly blue blobby image. And one way to fix that is in post-processing to deal with color temperature. So we're looking here at a chalice coral. And if you pay attention to this slider here, it's, the, it's our white balance slider. And this isn't really specific to Aperture. Pretty much any um, decent professional grade um, image processor like um, Photoshop or um, Lightroom or like this one Aperture here is going to have the, this white balance slider. So if you see here, it goes from like the, the, the warmer colors all the way to the cooler colors here. So as I play with this, I can pretty much change the color temperature to what would basically be daylight on this side, all the way back down to almost a pure actinic look, and then even into the ridiculous all blue blobby LED look. So you really do have a lot of control over how the color balance is going to affect this image. And this is one of the key benefits to shooting in RAW, because otherwise you'd have to set all this up in camera, and that can be very, very challenging. So, and, and worse yet, you might end up with just some result that you weren't all that happy with, and the, all, those, um, all those colors are kind of baked into the image, and you really don't have this level of control. What we have here is a picture of an elegance coral. And this is typically what a raw file kind of looks like once it's immediately imported into a raw processor. You get this kind of gray washed out look. And this is actually not a bad thing. When I was first starting into photography, this always kind of kind of annoyed me because I was thinking, you know, I have, I have this wonderful photographic equipment. I've got great programs. Why do these images look all gray? And it took a little while for me to figure out that all that grayness is unprocessed image information. It's actually up to you to fiddle with it in post and get it to all the levels and, and colors that you actually want. So taking a look again at this, uh, this picture of this elegance, we can tweak it to a large degree, but the only thing that I'm going to be tweaking on this particular image is um, the black point. By manipulating the black point, what I want to do is bring down the darkness in, in the background mainly. By bringing down the black to where it should be, you get a much more crisp looking image. Without getting too complicated in the discussion here, take a look at this image up top here in this little corner. This is the histogram. Now on the far right, that represents almost pure white. So you can see actually as, as this, these graphs kind of hit that side, it just peaks up. That means that um, you're basically getting uh, blown out whites. On the other end, you have pure black. And you see this distance here between pure black and where all our information actually starts. If we were to bring back all of this color information and tell it, here is where true black should be, watch what effect that has on this image. Just playing with it here, you see, watch the histogram as well as the image. So as I pull back on this black point here and make it darker and darker and darker, you see what effect that has on this image and how much that brings to the forefront all of our detail. I haven't messed with any of the colors, but you can almost see how everything seems that much more punchy. So again, I'll show you the difference back to where it was washed out all the way to here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about saturation. Up to this point, color temperature and black point are pretty benign. 
Saturation, unfortunately, can lend itself to some abuse. So if ever there was a controversial aspect of post-processing, I'd say about 90% of it, it's a result of people um, playing a little bit too hard with saturation. I'm taking a look here at this lovely picture of a rainbow ACAN. This is already fairly representative of the coral as it looks in, in my system. However, you can play with saturation, and that's this slider here. Watch what happens when I dial it way up. You get almost this cartoonish quality to the image, where you get these bright, bright, vibrant reds, bright greens. The coral definitely does not look like this. One thing you can do to, to tell if a picture has been doctored by oversaturation is where you completely have a loss of detail in areas of color. You might not be able to tell on a YouTube video too easily, but if you were to see this in person, there are large sections, like in, in here, for example, this green. There's almost no detail in there, and it's one solid color. That is a sure giveaway that this particular image has been oversaturated. On the other end of the spectrum, what you can do is you can essentially eliminate all color by completely desaturating it. From this black and white image, you can see the effect of ramping up the color saturation. It gets more and more bright to our middle point where this is basically what the coral looks like. And then we kind of enter into cartoon land where you get these overexpressed colors. If you're ever um, trying to show your corals off, you might want to tone it down just a little bit when it comes to saturation. It's very tempting to overdo it. And this is one of those things where a little bit of a restraint actually goes a long way towards the overall quality of your images. You really don't want to enter into, into clown land here. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope these post-processing tips help. I'll be putting together another Q&A video. So if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. See you guys, happy reefing.